Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to trace a simple program. Um, and the classes that I've made and these documents that explain how to do the tracing are all located in at this URL. So go there to find the stuff you need to look at. All right, um, we're going to use a BlueJay class that I made up, um, two classes actually, Basic Bottle, which represents a bottle that holds some soda, um, that has anywhere between 0 and 12 in ounces of soda in it, and a try using bottle class that is just going to test the, um, the uh, basic bottle class. Okay, so the technique I'm going to have you use is slightly painful, but, um, but easy to do. It's just a pain. So what you're going to do is you're going to follow all the directions on these different sheets that I give you. The first one says how to get set up to do a trace in BlueJay. Pretty easy. Get a piece of paper and split your paper up into these three sections, scratch, objects, and terminal output. So here's my piece of paper split up into those objects. Okay. And then once you've done that, let's suppose that we're in our class and I right click on try using bottle and I say new try using bottle. So I'm going to make a new try using bottle on my object bench. We'll call it try using three. There it is. What I want to know is how do I represent what I just did on, on paper if I want to trace it. Okay. So the first thing we just did is we created a new object. So I've got this document that says what to do when you see the new keyword. In this example I assume I use the robot class but it could be anything. If you're creating a new object from within another method, i.e. not from the object bench, right, then you do some stuff, but we're going to skip that. So the first thing we're supposed to do is draw a line on the scratch paper and write the constructor name, the class name at the top, and under that write the word this. Okay, so let me show you that. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit. This says try using bottle. I should have the word this written right here. But because I have this all set up and forgot to write the word this, you're going to have to bear with me and just imagine that there's a word this here. Okay, so floating in space here is the word this. Just, just when you're copying this out, I suggest you copy this example on a piece of paper by yourself. Write the word this here. Okay? All right. Next step. In your objects area, draw this little shape. It's supposed to look like something with a crown on top because classes are so special. And put the name of the class, in this case robot, in my case it's something else, at the top. All right, and then point an arrow from the word this that you wrote to that box. So what we're going to do, hang on. Okay, so here's my box with my funky crown on top and you have to imagine the word this has an arrow pointing over here. Okay, so bear with me. All right, let's do the next step. The next step says, look at your class and make boxes for all the instance variables inside of here and put default values in those boxes. So let's take a look at our try using bottle class. And um, when we look at the try using bottle class, if you actually look at the code, it's got two instance variables, a string and an int. String's called my favorite animal, the int is called my lucky number. So let's follow those rules that were on the paper. Hang on. So there you go. I made boxes for the instance variables, my favorite animals of type string, my lucky numbers of type int, and I put in the default. So that's two quotes right next to each other. The empty string is a default string and zero is the default integer. Okay, next step. If your constructor has arguments, you do some stuff. Well, if we look at the um, try using bottle constructor, no arguments, right? So we skip that. So now it says run all the contents of your constructor method. Whenever you declare new variables, put them on the scratch paper. So let's take a look. The constructor method says my favorite animal gets zebra. Evaluate the right hand side, put the answer on the left. So we want to um, put zebra into my favorite animal. Well, where do we look for the keyword zebra? Well, the first thing we do is we look on our scratch paper and we see if we have a, a box called zebra here. I'm sorry, where do we look for the keyword my favorite animal? Well, we look in here and we see if we have a box called my favorite animal. And if we don't, then we follow the arrow from this. Remember the word this that's here that you've drawn on your sheet, right? You follow that arrow and you see if there's something called my favorite animal inside that box. And if there is, 
then you um, change that. So in this case, there is a my favorite animal when we follow the this. So we're going to change that to be zebra. So hold on. So as you can see, I crossed out the old value. Oops, hang on. I got to put quotes around that. There we go. I crossed out the old value and I put the string zebra in there. All right. Now we're going to run the next line of code. It says my lucky number gets 42. Well, we look under this line again in the try using bottle scratch area and we say, do I have something called my lucky number? Nope. So follow the arrow from this and the arrow from this points to this object and inside of there we have a variable called my lucky number. So we're going to update that value so that instead of being zero, whoop, come on, there you go. It's 42 and we crossed out the zero. Okay. All right, so then we run the next line of code and try using bottle and oh look at that we're done we're done the constructor method. Okay, let's go back to our instructions and see what we do when we're done our, our uh, constructor. After you've completed the constructor method, cross out everything on the scratch paper under the line and return the arrow that this is pointing at. Okay, so let's see. Let's cross out everything under the line. Oops. There we go. And there, that's supposed to be the arrow that this is pointing at. I know it appeared a little bit late, but we're going to return this arrow back. Now, since we created the object on the object bench, we don't end up with anything new there. Okay. Now, next step. Let's see what happens when we right click on this and run the test one method. Okay, so let's trace it and see what happens and then we can actually um, run it for real and make sure what we thought would happen does happen. Okay, so we're going to run the test one method and now I've got this sheet that says what to do when, run, when you run a method. Okay, so if you're running the method from within another method, in other words, not from the object bench, well, that's not us, so we'll skip that step. So it says draw a line on the scratch paper and write and write the this should say the method name. Can you tell I copied and pasted pasted at the top? Sorry. Um, so draw a line on the scratch paper and write the method name at the top. All right. So let's do that. Hang on. Well, let's see. What was the name of that method? The name of that method was test one. So we're going to draw a line and we're going to write test one under that line. Hang on. Okay, there you go. We did that. Next line says, if your method has arguments, if it has parameters, well, let's see, does our method have arguments? Let's look at the um, test one method. Oh, no parameters. So we skip that. Now it says run all the contents of your method. New lyrical variables go on your scratch paper and new objects do not. Okay, so let's do that. So we look at our code and it says int age. Well, that's a new local variable. So we're going to make a box for age on our scratch paper. So hold on. Okay, so we made a box. It's of type int. It's called age. We started out with the default type for integer, which is zero. Okay, now it says age gets 21. Evaluate the right hand side. That's 21. Put it into age. Well, we look on our scratch sheet. There's age. So we're going to cross that zero out and we're going to put 21 in. Hang on. Okay, there we go. Next line of code says string my favorite candy. So again, we got to make a box in our scratch area. It's a local variable type string called my favorite candy. Hold on. There you go. A string called my favorite candy. Apologies, I can't fit the whole name in there. And it's the empty string. We started it out as the default. All right. And now we look at the next thing. It says my favorite candy gets Snickers. So we're going to cross that out and put Snickers in there instead. There you go. All right. Let's keep going. Now it says basic bottle B1. So let's make another box of type basic bottle called B1. So there's my box, basic bottle. It's, it's called B1 of type basic bottle. Now the default type for an object is an arrow that points to null. So let me do that. So there you go. We said, let's look at the code again. It said basic bottle B1. So we did it. 
Now it says B1 equals new basic bottle Coke. Oh, we got that new keyword again. All right, let's run, let's just look at the instructions for what you do when you see new again. So, what to do when you see the new keyword? If you're creating a new object from within a new method, oh, we're doing that now, make a note on your scratch paper of the line number where you're pausing. So if you look at this code here, we are pausing right here. We need to do the right-hand side of this equation, and then we can put it into B1, but we can't put it into B1 until we do the right-hand side, and that's on line 37. You may not be able to read that, but it says 37. So I'm just going to make a note here on my drawing that says paused on line 37. So I paused on line 37 in the method test one. Okay? So we're pausing on line 37. We got to run the new. Let's look at those instructions again. So we did that. Draw a line on the scratch paper and write the constructor name and then under that write the word this. This time I'll actually write the word this. All right, hang on. Okay, I've got my basic bottle, the name of the constructor and my word this. All right. In your objects area, draw this box and put the name of the class at the top and point an arrow from the word this to that. So let me do that. Actually, I just squished this window down a little bit so I'd have a little bit more room. And I'm going to squish this over here just a little bit so I have a little bit more room so I can put it here. So hang on now. Okay, there you go. I got a basic bottle. It's like that. And I got to take an arrow, draw an arrow from this up to the basic bottle object. There you go. Okay, next thing to do. Look at your class and make boxes for all the instance variables. So we have to look at the basic bottle class and make boxes for the instance variables and put the defaults in there. So let's look at the basic bottle class and our variables are amount which is an int and beverage which is a string. So let's take those and put those boxes in there. So there you go, we've now got amount, which is an int, beverage, I couldn't spell it out, which is a string, amount goes to the default value of int, which is zero, beverage goes to the default value of string, which is the double, the double quotes, the empty string. All right, so we did that. Look at your class and make boxes for all the instance variables and put the defaults, we just did that. If your constructor has arguments, well, let's take a look. Our constructor has one argument. It's a string called beverage type. Now, if your constructor has arguments, then, oops, make boxes for the formal parameters and copy the actual parameters. So let's do that. Our formal parameter is called beverage type. And the actual parameter was um, called from inside of our try using bottle method, remember we were on here, is Coke. Okay, So we're going to make a box of type string called beverage type in our scratch area and we're going to put Coke in there. So hold on. So there you go. I did that. Okay. So let's go back to the rules. What do you do when you see the new keyword? It says make the boxes. I did that. Copy the actual parameters. I did that, right? So we've got this beverage type is a string and it's got Coke in there. Run all the contents of your constructor method. Whenever you declare new variables, put them on the scratch paper. All right, so let's look at that basic bottle constructor method. The basic bottle constructor method says amount gets 12. So we look on the line here. Is there something called amount? No. So we follow this. Oh, check it out. There's an amount in there. So we're going to change that to 12. So I'm going to cross this out and put a 12 in there. Okay. All right, so I crossed it out and I put a 12 in there. All right, and now let's look at the code. It says amount gets 12. Beverage gets beverage type. Evaluate the right-hand side, put it on the left. Right-hand side is a variable called beverage type. Ah, check it out. We have it here. It's the value Coke. Where do we put it? Into beverage. Do I have one here? No, so I have to follow this, and I put it into beverage. So we're going to cross out that string and put in Coke. Okay, there you go. My crossouts aren't as exciting now, but it's easier to draw. All right, and let's look at the basic bottle code again. We are done the function, right? See, close curly brace. So we look at our rules. What do you do when you get to the new keyword? 
after you've completed the constructor method, cross out everything on the scratch paper under the line and return the arrow that is this, that this is pointing at. So we're going to cross out all this stuff. There you go, crossed out. And the thing that's going to get returned is this arrow that points to this. So let's see. Where were we? It says we were paused on line 37 of test 1. So let's go back and look at line 37 of test 1 inside of try using bottle. Here we go. It said do this new command and then put the result into B1. Well, what is the result? The result is this arrow. So if this arrow is the result and I need to put that into B1, then I got to cross out this arrow and put what this one's pointing at in here. So hang on one second. Okay, so now I've crossed out the old arrow that pointed to null, right? This pointed to null. And I have copied the arrow that pointed to this. Oh, come on, climb up a little bit. And put it into this box. So now B1 points at this box. Now really we have to cross out everything under the line, so as soon as we've grabbed that this thing, we should probably get rid of this arrow because we're crossing out everything under the line. We temporarily returned it, but to make this picture easier to understand, I'm just going to delete that right now. Okay. We paused on line 37. Now what you do is you just keep going. So, oops, wrong one though. We were in test, try using bottle now, so we're here. So now it says basic bottle B2. All right, so I'm going to do these two steps, the basic bottle B2 and B2 gets new basic bottle Pepsi and show you what it looks like after I'm done. All right, hang on. Okay, so there's a lot of steps that I didn't show you, but if you follow the rules on what to do when you see the new keyword, eventually you get another basic bottle that B2 points at. All right, so if we go back to the try using bottle code, it's hard to show you everything here. It said B, basic bottle B2, B2 equals new basic bottle Pepsi, and now it says B1.drink. So this says run B1, run the drink method on B1. So what you're going to do is you're going to do the how do I run a method thing, um, but I guess I'm going to have to add to that that since it's running it on B1, in your method you need to pass an arrow to this. So what you're going to end up with is a picture that looks a little bit like this. Hold on. Okay, so take a look at where I am. I said in my code, b1.drink. So I changed the paused. It now says paused on line 42 because that says 42. I drew a line. I wrote the name of the method and I pointed this at the same thing b1 is pointing at. Right? I'm going to run the drink method, right? So do all the steps in the method just like before. And if you look at the drink method, what it ends up doing is clearing out the amount um, of beverage in here and doing a print statement. All right. And then after I'm done, I cross all this stuff out. That arrow goes away. We're back here again, and we will do b2.drink, and we'll say paused. So I think at this point, I'm going to stop the video for a second, and I'm going to just show you what I think the picture should look like when you're totally done. Actually, maybe not totally done. After you say b1.drink, I've gotten rid of some of the crossouts, but you end up with zero here. After you say b2.drink, you end up with zero here. Then it says b2 gets b1. That means point b2 to the same thing b1 points at. So this arrow is going to get crossed out, and it's going to get replaced with an arrow pointing to b1. Okay, that makes sense. And then it says B1 gets B2. Okay, well, it says tricky here. Well, that is tricky because it says take whatever B2 is pointing at and point B1 to it. Well, that would be the same thing, right? So we just kind of cross this arrow out and then replace it with itself. And then finally, it says B1.drink, B2.drink. So in this terminal output area, by the time you're done, it's going to say a few things and let's just run it on the BlueJ object bench so you can see what should get printed on there if you were really doing it there. Here we go. So it says ah Coke for the B1.drink, ah Pepsi for the B2.drink, but in the end since the two arrows point to the same thing it just says bummer no Coke left, bummer no Coke left. Phew! So hopefully this made sense, hopefully this is helpful, hope it helped. Enjoy.